video, we'll be going over IRS Notice CP39. This is a tax notice that you might receive from the Internal Revenue Service if you had a tax refund that was applied to taxes you owed in a different tax year. So uh, we'll go through the top of this form and then we'll get into a little bit more depth exactly what this form is trying to tell you. So as, as we always walk through with these videos, I, I try to point out a couple of things uh, at the very top of every CP notice. So in the upper right hand corner, you'll see some pertinent information. This is the notice number, the tax year, the notice date. I always uh, advise people to pay particular attention to the notice date, uh, specifically because if there's any action requested or if you want to uh, if you disagree with the IRS determination and you want to have a conversation with them about it, there's only so much time that you have available before your window closes. So if the IRS asks you to take a specific action within 30 days, they're talking about within 30 days of this notice date. So always keep that in mind as you're trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, social security number and then a contact phone number in the case you have any questions or you want to talk to an IRS employee. On the left hand side is uh, taxpayer name and address. So as you're scanning all of this to make sure that it's uh, accurate, uh, keep in mind that uh, you should always make sure your address is up to date. So if you recently changed addresses, if you recently moved, you'll want to inform the IRS. So if you're about to file a tax return, your tax return will update your tax record accordingly. If you're in between tax, re uh, tax seasons, uh, then if you're going to call the IRS, you can go ahead and change your address over the phone after you've validated your information. Uh, if you aren't planning to call the IRS, you can then file the uh, IRS official change of address form. For individual taxpayers, that's IRS Form 8822. For business owners, that would be IRS Form 8822-B. So that way, uh, your uh, IRS correspondence, even if you're not expecting it, will arrive promptly instead of getting shuffled around the mail system. All right, so uh, let's take a closer look at this notice. So it says uh, we applied a $500 overpayment to taxes that you owed for 2015, uh, we took your $500 overpayment, which is referring to a tax refund from your 2016 tax return, and we applied it to the 2015 taxes. Since you originally owed $2,000, that brings your tax bill down to $1,500. Then it says, if you already have an installment plan or a payment plan, uh, continue with that agreement. You don't need to do anything else. However, uh, if you want to avoid uh, additional interest in any applicable penalties, then they're going to give you a due date of when you should pay the full amount of your back taxes. So uh, in this instance, that due date happens to be 21 days from the notice date. Uh, but in this case, they just specifically stated February 20th, 2017. So you can either go on the IRS website and pay directly. You can uh, use this payment stub uh, and mail that to the IRS. So uh, I always tell people to use the address on the payment stub. In this case, I took a look at the top of the form uh, to see if there is a different address there. They both route to the Kansas City IRS office. But, I, but that's not always the case. So you may have a different address uh, up here on the letterhead than you would here on the payment voucher. Uh, my default is always uh, send your payment to the address listed on your payment voucher. So you would just cut this off on the dotted line. You would make a check or money order payable to the United States Treasury. You write your social security number, the tax year, and the tax form on your check or money order. And then uh, you should include that in the envelope with this voucher. So um, there's some more guidance on what you should do immediately. Uh, you 
uh, may have some options. Uh, if you submitted a previous payment, then pay the remaining balance. If you, um, you know, if if you did this, then do that. So pay uh, attention to see if any of these apply to your situation. So for example, uh, it says if the IRS previously notified you that they suspended enforced collection on your account because it would create a financial hardship and your situation has not changed, then you don't need to do anything. Um, but if you've already submitted a payment, then you would pay the remaining balance. So just take a closer look to see if any of those apply to your situation. Uh, if you haven't already, you can, uh, you know, go to the IRS website and uh, submit an application for a payment plan. Uh, under certain dollar value, I believe it's $25,000, you can do everything online. Uh, if the situation involves more money or it's a little bit more complex, you can file IRS Form 9465, which is an installment agreement request. On the third line, uh, they talk about an offer and compromise, which is where you pay less than the full amount that you owe. Uh, so you, you can submit that. There's a link to the IRS website where you can go through the offer and compromise pre-qualifier tool to see if you would qualify. So uh, there's some additional guidance here on this uh, form. I'm just going to click this hyperlink here to see what the website says. So there's a lot of additional information about the installment agreement request, the offer and compromise, options on what you should do if you disagree with the notice, uh, if you can't pay the full amount, and then tips to avoid this situation in future tax years. So. Uh, not a whole lot of new information here on this page. Uh, everything that you need to take action on should be in this uh, notice. So uh, w that's all we have for this video. I'll put links in the show notes to uh, articles and videos we've created about certain forms mentioned in this video. So if you like our articles, please subscribe to our newsletter. If you like our YouTube videos, please uh, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you have any questions or comments, or if there's another topic that you'd like to see in an upcoming video, please don't hesitate to hit me up in the comments section. Uh, thank you very much and have a great day.